Well, the, our, our standard uh, ECHO IVF program, in contrast to our ECHO donor egg program, uh, is a simplified routine IVF cycle. Uh, some of our colleagues call it a mini IVF cycle. Uh, it is not a concept that we very aggressively are pursuing. And the reason uh, is that, uh, with very few exceptions, we do not think that it is a kind of IVF cycle that makes clinically or economically sense. But there are some very young patients uh, who produce large numbers of eggs and embryos even with very minimal stimulation who indeed don't need more. And in those patients it may make sense. Uh, but uh, we do not feel that echo IVF or mini IVF as others call it uh, makes sense in older women so we do not recommend it in women above age 38. We don't think it makes sense in women with abnormally low ovarian reserve, even at young ages, in other words, women with premature ovarian aging, so we don't recommend it in them. Uh, and uh, therefore, it's kind of only reserved for the young patient who has perfect ovarian function, may have a tubal problem. In that patient, it, it may make sense, and it involves a uh, much less aggressive stimulation of, of their ovaries. Therefore, there's much less monitoring required, much less medication required. That lowers the costs dramatically. And so once again, uh, we are able to offer this program at very remarkably uh, discounted uh, rates. And the principal idea here, like with our echo a donor egg program is to make IVF affordable. We feel very, we feel uh, very bad when we face patients who we know need a treatment and simply cannot get the treatment because they cannot afford it. And infertility, unfortunately, very often is not falling under standard insurance coverage. So. Um, how much treatment costs is, is very important. And so our ECHO IVF program uh, is geared at, at giving the opportunity uh, for IVF to patients who, can, who simply cannot afford a regular IVF cycle. No, we don't think that is true. I mean, uh, um, to be fair, um, I, I have to acknowledge that some colleagues have made that claim. There are even one or two papers in the literature uh, that uh, have suggested this. Uh, but we have, first of all, investigated it in our patient population, and we have found it not to be the case. Uh, we have done case control studies in our patient population and have not found it to be the case. Uh, we have uh, even uh, tested the claim that there are more chromosomal abnormalities uh, in cycles that use more fertility drugs, higher dosages of fertility drugs which in principle is true, but uh, this is yet again one example uh, where you really have to be very careful in your statistical analysis because what we found is that while it is true that the percentage of chromosomal abnormalities goes up with increasing dosages of fertility drugs, the number of mature embryos that we end up having for transfer, good embryos that are chromosomally normal, goes up even more. And so while it is true that more medication increases chromosomal abnormality percentages, 
you still end up with more normal embryos for transfer and therefore with better pregnancy chances if you use higher medication dosages. So we do not believe that uh, uh, mild stimulation as it is sometimes called or mini IVF gives you better embryos. Uh, it, it, it gives you fewer it gives you fewer good quality embryos for transfer and therefore it reduces your pregnancy chances in comparison to a regular IVF cycle.